What's up guys, I'm Andy with the CISO Perspective and in today's episode, we're gonna talk about securing your AWS virtual private cloud with a next-gen firewall. For all of AWS's benefits, one of the biggest complaints from customers is that they provide almost no native network security. That's why next-gen firewalls are a booming business in the AWS marketplace with almost every firewall vendor being an option to pick from. According to Gartner, infrastructure as a service is the fastest growing segment in the cloud adoption. And as more organizations move entire infrastructures to the cloud, we need to know how to properly design our VPCs to take advantage of the benefits of a next-gen firewall. The AWS Shared Responsibility Model states that customers are responsible for security in their cloud. This includes protecting network traffic, firewall configuration, and pretty much everything above layer three. In this video, we'll cover some VPC basics along with how we can design some proper segmentation and modern security concepts to our virtual private cloud. Let's start off with the most common entry and exit point into your VPC the Internet Gateway. The Internet Gateway is a redundant virtual router that connects your VPC to the outside world. You could only have one attached per VPC and you would typically make it your default gateway on all of your public subnets. The default VPC in AWS has pre-configured subnets with a routing table that routes through the Internet Gateway. Any instance you deploy on these subnets are automatically given a public IP and accessible to the outside world. On a traditional network, you would never deploy an application or a server directly on the internet, and the cloud should be no different. Here's why. These are some of the logs from my own AWS environment. Within minutes of deploying a new Windows instance on a new Elastic IP, I received as many as 60 connection attempts a second by over 40 different IP addresses all over the world. This is because AWS IP space is a known range being constantly scanned by bots and script kitties. At the time of the recording of this video, a botnet called Goldbrew is sweeping the internet for live RDP hosts that are vulnerable to the Blue Keep RDP vulnerability. And this is a perfect example of why we need multiple layers of security. The traditional cloud approach is focused too heavily on application security alone. And seeing as how these attacks started before most organizations had a chance to patch them, if I didn't have proper protection, I could have easily been compromised. This is why our first security decision should be to segment our VPC into public and private zones. And since AWS doesn't allow us to do this without the help of third-party devices, we'll need a next-gen firewall from the AWS marketplace to segment and inspect our traffic in between zones. Before we dive into our new design, let's first cover some VPC basics. Internet traffic arrives from your internet gateway and is processed first by your routing table. The routing table determines which subnet to route the packet to. Before traffic enters a subnet, it is inspected by the network ACL, which are stateless filters looking only at the IP and port of packets. Once it passes the network ACL, traffic enters a subnet and is inspected by security groups before going into your EC2 instance. Security groups are very basic layer four firewalls. They don't look at anything inside the application layer. Relying only on security groups as your firewall puts your security posture back at least 20 years when you consider that even the most basic modern firewalls allow you to do things like application identification, malware, threat protection, IPS, and of course, much more. This is why even AWS recommends using a third-party firewall when you have requirements beyond basic packet filtering. A next-gen firewall provides thousands of features that we won't cover here today, but most importantly for our design, it provides the segmentation we need to split our application into public and private zones. In our new secure VPC design, we're going to deploy a next-gen firewall from the AWS marketplace with at least two network interfaces. One interface will be on our public subnet with the internet gateway attached, and at least one other interface will be on our private subnet where our applications reside. We'll also want to create a new routing table for our private subnets, which point all traffic to the inside virtual NIC of the firewall. In this way, all northbound traffic is always routed through the firewall for content inspection and policy checking. That means that we'll have at least two routing tables in our VPC, a public one that points to our internet gateway. This one should only be for public and internet facing instances like our firewall and another routing table for our private subnets, which points to the inside virtual NIC of the firewall as its gateway. Northbound traffic should be tightly controlled and firewall policy should be locked down to known fully qualified domains or IPs of known destinations your application requires. If your firewall supports it, you can also monitor outbound connections for botnet signaling, command and control servers, and other indicators of compromise. Incoming traffic destined to your application will now hit the firewall's public interface and route south to your application. This is where firewall tools like reverse proxies, application inspection, IPS, and DDoS can help protect your application from inbound requests. Because your servers are in private IP space, the public IP your user would connect to would actually belong to the firewall on its public interface. Requests of that external IP are then routed or destination added into the internal resource according to your firewall policy. Equally as important, we need to consider traffic that flows laterally or within the same boundaries, also called east to west traffic. 
This could be a web application talking to a database or a custom application talking to a file share. While AWS has some limitations on what we can design here, we can work around these limitations by micro-segmenting our internal servers into different subnets. For this scenario to work correctly, we'll distribute our applications across different subnets. The gateway for each subnet is going to be the virtual network interface of the firewall. This ensures that traffic always goes to the firewall first in order to apply proper content inspection, filtering, and auditing. Designing this level of segmentation not only gives us more granular policies within our application, but it also acts as breach containers in case an application gets compromised. By inspecting east and west traffic, you can detect and contain potential breaches from causing further damage to your environment. This means that if a web server is compromised, the damage would be contained and not spread across to your other instances. While we've made our VPC more secure, we've also introduced a single point of failure if we only deploy an instance into one availability zone. This is why we need to deploy a firewall on at least two availability zones within all the regions that we're operating in, with a minimum of two firewalls per region. An availability zone equals a data center, so if we need to tolerate the loss of one data center, we'll need to deploy our firewall instance into at least two different availability zones. Any instance on AWS can only have virtual NICs on the same availability zone that the instance is deployed, which means that you can have a virtual NIC in two different availability zones. Make sure your routing tables are configured in such a way that applications can reach the backup firewall in a failover scenario. As you look for potential firewall vendors, make sure you understand how HA works for each of them. Some vendors HA mechanism is completely seamless where traffic is automatically routed to the backup firewall with no downtime. Other vendors may rely on scripts to move default gateways and elastic IPs around between instances. Because HA varies by vendor, we won't go over the technical details of how the firewall will accomplish this but it is important to know how your preferred vendors handles a failover and what, if any, limitations you should be aware of. Some basic questions you may want to research for the vendor are things like, how are my policies and sessions synced between an HA group? How are Elastic IPs handled during a failover? How will a private instance route to the backup in case of a failure? How much downtime should I expect? What, if any, are the dependencies on other AWS resources? Some vendors rely on CloudWatch, Lambda, or a small EC2 instance to work properly all of which will incur an additional cost. So that does it for this video, you guys, and I hope you found it informative. I will be launching the CISOperspective.com very soon where you can send all of your cybersecurity questions and suggestions. Until then, you can always reach me at the CISOperspective at gmail.com. As always, please comment, hit like, subscribe to stay on top of our latest releases here at the CISO Perspective.